move on to talk about uh, about Michael Sandel's book, uh, The Tyranny of Merit. Uh, Michael was a guest on the Glenn Show a few weeks ago. Uh, he's a professor of government at Harvard and an ethicist uh, and has written books like uh, What Money Can't Buy, uh, in which he, I think, very insightfully uh, distinguishes between the valuations that the market renders and the valuations that are ethically uh, uh, more uh, imperative. Um, and uh, he, he uh, in this book, uh, The Tyranny of Merit, um, I, I'm not going to try to completely summarize the argument. People can consult the earlier discussion with Sandel himself, or better yet, just consult the book. But he raises a question about the political implications of the kind of stratification that we see in uh, the globalized uh, world that we live in uh, between those with a set of skills that are highly valued in the market and uh, are insulated from the vagaries of uh, trade and uh, dislocation and, and change that globalization has brought about and those who are, who are uh, vulnerable to those dislocations and who are not doing quite so well. Uh, and uh, Michael thinks that uh, the rise of populism in politics in the West, in the United States in particular, uh, is related to this uh, uh, alienation uh, and schism that has arisen uh, based, justified, and rooted in conceptions of merit uh, that have winners and losers um, and the, and the losers are losers not only in their material condition but also in in their esteem and their degree of social respect. Um, anyway, Ernie, you've been trying to talk to me about this book for a long time. We've both read it and thought about it. Um, I want you to uh, amplify the the description that I just gave and then tell me what's on your mind. Well, you know, just to kind of again underscore what you just said. The, the the wonderful metaphor he uses is from the TV series Breaking Bad, where the guy is a teacher, and uh, and but can't make enough money to sustain his, his livelihood by teaching. But he's teaching chemistry, and he learns that he can make a, a fortune uh, by selling uh, drugs. Okay, making you know, let's I think it's methamphetamines. Okay, uh, yeah, and, and, so, and he becomes a you know drug dealer. Okay, so the question is, okay, the market you know, for his work as a drug dealer is much more lucrative than his work as a teacher, which of the ones is, so, is socially desirable? Well, Michael says, obviously, a teacher, okay? Uh, whereas the market, you believe in market valuation, you would say, no, the drug dealer is a bit more valuable. Sure. Uh, and so that kind of captures, I think, a lot of what he's saying. Now, for me, the more, more important <laughs> is that, Excuse me. is the notion that people have who are the winners, that they deserve what they got, okay? They deserve, quotes, the value of their marginal product, okay? I think I framed it correctly, okay? And yeah. they're, so because, because they've created this incremental productivity, they deserve that, whereas people like Frank Nye says, no, luck has just as much uh, to, to say about why you, you're successful as anything else, okay? Well, but, you know, we, we, we invested in our education we you know we, we brought our kids up right yes but the reason why you're able to do that is also has to do with luck and genetics etc so there's all kinds of unexplained reasons why you're successful and you cannot the, the biggest concern that he has and i have is the hubris the winners have that they think they deserve what they got but more importantly that the people who are the losers deserve what they got and so it's kind of like the the, the parable of the of the uh, Pharisee and the, and the publican, where the Pharisee says, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, thank you, Lord, for making me who I am. I'm a great human being. I'm a wonderful human being. I'm not like this crummy publican and a sinner. And the publican is saying, you know, forgive me and you know, etc. Okay, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sinner, etc. And so the point is that the, the, the ethics of Christianity are the publican who acknowledges his sin. You know, is going to enter the kingdom, whereas the other guy is so full of his own self-absorption, so full of his own art, he ain't going to get there. Okay. Let, so, let, let me, let me. I got to ask you something, or I got to interrupt. I object. 
here's here's my object. There's something tautological in saying, okay, let me take two people. One of them gets up at 6 a.m. every morning, works 12 hours, goes home and eats and goes to sleep. Six days a week, rest on the Sabbath. And he builds a life. The other one uh, gets by with his hand out, bouncing from one to another to another situation and never does a damn thing with his time worth remarking. Years go by. It could be said of the person who was industrious, well, they got the industrious gene. They were just fortunate enough to be born with a, a disposition and a sensibility that inclined them toward uh, frugality and uh, self-discipline. And the one who was wayward and uh, 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 you know delinquent had the misfortune of having been born that way. And there's no reason for the person who has this big house on the hill built with years of hard labor uh, to crow about it. He just happened to be, you know, the beneficiary. There. Then they're going to say, how did he get the wood up to the top of the hill to build that house, et cetera. Then they're going to say, who keeps the bandits from coming into his house and taking stuff away from him? There had to be a government. There had to be a state. He doesn't deserve any credit. Well, I don't want to live in a world where a man who works 20 years from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. to build a life can't take credit for that relative to a man who wastes his time, his God-given gift. I think that judgment is not only warranted, I think it's imperative. I think civilization rests on making that judgment. So I deeply distrust this move in which you're going to dismiss as uh, hubris. Well, you're being no, no, let me finish. Let me finish. All right, okay. I, don't, I want to talk about another H word, and the word is honor. You're going to dismiss as hubris the fact that I've lived honorably. No, I'm going to say to you, I appreciate, first of all, if you knew, I'm assuming we all understand that in order to build up, a strong and effective civic culture. There has to be honor. There has to be reciprocity. There has to be humility. There has to be generosity, okay? There has to be a disposition to include people in as much as possible. So all of the virtues you're talking about, okay, all of the discipline that you're talking about is presumed, okay, in a strong, civic vital culture but let me take you to the Rio Grande Valley okay in South Texas where we had a group of fishermen who worked who got up not at six o'clock in the morning at 4 30 in the morning okay to go out and catch fish with their nets they did that for 20 30 40 years they earned income they built decent houses they sent their kids to college okay then along comes to be fair, probably correctly, environmental regulations, which says the, the nets that they're using are inimical to the fish, the vibrancy of the fish. So they can't use their nets anymore. Okay, so they go and meet with their state senator, and they, he was telling them their situation. And he says to these 50 year old men who've got a fourth grade education, fifth grade education, because they worked all their life and left school in order to work you know, for their families. Well, there's job training programs you can take. I wanted to get bad the impaler on that state senator. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm with you that that is an insensitive response to the dilemma of these people who deserve better. I don't understand how that relates to the point I was making. Well, the however. point I'm trying to make with you is, okay, that these people, then we can say to them, they're part of the deplorables. They're part of the people, you know, who are the great unwashed. And the, you know, one of my best teachers, the guy named Kerry Thompson, said, "Okay, I, want to, I stand for the great unwashed." Okay. Okay, so you're saying not every loser is somebody who sat around on their hands twiddling Absolute. their thumbs. What Sometimes a, a loser just has had ass. bad luck. Who had who worked their, their their tail off in, in construction and manufacturing. And did everything they were supposed to do, kept, you know, pay their taxes, pay their rent, pay their mortgage, okay, kept their homes neat, 
raise their kids, okay? And all of a sudden, you know, their job leaves and goes off shore to China. Okay, but I want to get back to meritocracy because what I was the position I was trying to defend is crowing about my success is not necessarily hubris. Crowing about myself well may be uh, an honor to which I am uh, entitled based upon uh, what it is that I've done with my bare hands. Uh, and, and I want to distinguish between, you know, those who do and who don't. I mean, there's a flip side to this. I'm sorry to go on. I'll be brief. You're a lawbreaker. Now, and I'm not. I'm a law abider and you're a lawbreaker. You might have hurt somebody. You stole something. Now, uh, is it hubris? For, for me to label you as someone who uh, is deserving of the punishment that you are, uh, ha have earned? Is it hubris uh, for me to, 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 to take pride in the fact that I actually uh, exerted the discipline and self-control necessary to avoid the temptation of doing this illegal act? Uh, am I not entitled to make a distinction in, in terms of social standing between people who do and who do not uh, live in a way that is compatible with uh, Similar living for their neighbors. I'm not against merit. I'm against okay. merit. the ideology of meritocracy. As I, you know, and so recognizing and honoring people, I think is very appropriate. And but, therefore, dishonoring people. But remember the book of Job. Okay, Job was a good guy. He did everything he was supposed to do. Okay, and the only reason he's getting punished is because of a cosmic wager. It goes on between between God and one of his angels, okay? And then when Job cries out and says, what did I do to deserve this? Do you remember God's answer? No, why don't you tell me? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the universe? Oh, yeah. What right do you have to, 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 to demand an explanation from me? And so there's some things which are beyond us, which, which are, and that's why we have mystery, and that's why we have awe, and that's why we have wonder, because there are things we cannot grab a hold of and totally explain. 